Hello guys, welcome to Body Capsule channel. Today we will discuss about anatomy of pharynx. Anatomy of pharynx. Pharynx is a conical fibromuscular tube forming upper part of air and food passages. It is 12 to 14 cm long, extending from base of skull to lower border of cricoid cartilage, where it becomes continuous with the esophagus opposite to the sixth cervical vertebra. It has a musculomembranous wall which is deficient anteriorly. So at last we will revise about where is it deficient. So it is deficient in anterior part. It divides into three parts according to its position. First nasal part which extends from base of skull to first cervical vertebra. Then oral part it extends from second cervical vertebra and upper part third cervical vertebra then laryngeal part which extend from lower part third cervical vertebra to the sixth cervical vertebra as nasal part also called as posterior to nasal cavity or nasopharynx or epipharynx it extends from skull base to heart palate then oral part which is also called as posterior to the oral cavity also called, called as oropharynx from heart palate to hyoid bone then third laryngeal part posterior to the larynx also called as hypo or laryngopharynx from hyoid bone to lower end of cricoid cartilage so we can see in the figure division of pharynx cervical vertebra to their posterior wall important note it conducts the air from larynx and foot to esophagus it is widest at base of skull and then it narrows rapidly at level of palate but widens again in the oral and laryngeal part and then rapidly narrows to esophagus. Now we will discuss position and relation of pharynx and we can see the arrows on selected areas first superior part then anterior and inferior and other parts are posterior and lateral we will discuss each and individually superior first. Base of skull includes the body of spinoid and basilar part of occipital bone. Then anterior, it is deficient anteriorly and it is replaced by posterior nasal apertures and oropharyngeal stomach and laryngeal inlet. Then inferior, which continue with the esophagus. Posteriorly, pharyngeal venous flexes and layer of loose areolar tissue separates from prevertebral fascia and laterally, it attaches neurovascular bundles of neck. Layers of pharyngeal wall. It is made up of four layers from within inside to outside. Number one, mucous membrane, pharyngeal aponeurosis, also called as pharyngeobasilar fascia, muscular coat, buccopharyngeal fascia. You can see structure of pharyngeal wall. The base of skull is tendon with the station divided with the four parts which is number one mucous membrane, pharyngeobasilar fascia, muscular coat and buccopharyngeal fascia. And minus of morgagni we will discuss in next video. This is very important because there are lots of questions are coming in exams. Now we have to remember this important notes as it is very important because lots of questions are coming in exams. So number one mucous membrane and another number that is second number which is called muscular coat in that it contains two layer of muscle and three muscle in each layer so we'll discuss right now mucous membrane lines pharyngeal cavity eustachian tubes nasal cavities mouth larynx and esophagus which is the part of mucous membrane and then in histopathological examination we can see ciliated columnar present in only nasopharynx but in other parts we can see stratified squamous epithelium muscular coat contains two layer of muscles with three muscles in each layer such as first external layer and then internal layer now we'll talk about right now external layer in external layer it contains superior middle and inferior constrictor muscles superior constrictor muscles form bed of palatine tonsil and inferior constrictor muscles has two parts such as thyropharyngeus with oblique fibers and cricopharyngeus with transverse fibers 
between these fibers a potential gap is present called Clehens dehiscence as it is very important as it is also called as gateway of tears as perforation can occur during esophagus scopy and site for herniation in case of pharyngeal pouch. As you can see this diagram as I made this diagram by my hand and over here we can divide these two layers that is internal layer and external layer. In the internal layer there is a stylopharyngeus, salpingopharyngeus, platopharyngeus, muscle fiber that runs in longitudinal direction as it is an internal layer whereas superior constrictor, middle constrictor, inferior constrictor, muscle fiber that runs in circular direction hence it is an external layer. Whereas internal layer fibers run in longitudinal direction. Again we are talking about the constrictor muscles as they are the three muscles that form curved sheets lie in the posterior wall and side of pharynx and overlap each other. They are inserted into median fibrous raphe which extends from base of skull to the esophagus. It supplies by pharyngeal plexus with additional supply to the inferior constrictor from external and recurrent laryngeal nerves. The action of these muscles is propelling bolus of foot downwards. In addition, superior constrictor narrows the pharyngeal stomach. As we can see this pharyngeal raphe, the arrow which is denoting that the muscles which are inserting into the median fibrous raphe extends from base of skull to esophagus and also supplied by pharyngeal plexus. Earlier we talked about external layer and internal layer. In external layer there was three muscles and in internal layer there was three muscles. In external layer muscles were superior constrictor, middle constrictor, inferior constrictor muscles that muscle fiber runs in circular direction whereas in internal layer stylopharyngeus, salpingopharyngeus, platopharyngeus these muscle fibers runs in longitudinal direction. So guys this is the last picture of this video and I am thoroughly going to read this table. Now coming the part of each muscles with the origin insertion nerve supply and an action. So first superior constrictor muscle originates from media pterygoid plate, pterygoid hemulus, pterygomandibular ligament, mylohoid line of mandible. Insertion pharyngeal tubercle of occipital bone, raphe in midline posteriorly. It supplies by pharyngeal plexus. Its action, it helps soft palate in closing of nasal pharynx, propels bolus downward. Middle constrictor, it originates from lower part of stylo ligament, lesser and greater cornu of hyoid bone. Insertion pharyngeal raphe supplies by pharyngeal plexus. Its actions uh, propels bolus downward. Third of external layer, inferior constrictor muscle originates from lamina of thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage. Insertion pharyngeal raphe supplies by pharyngeal plexus. Action propels bolus downward. So middle constrictor, inf inferior constrictor both insertion, nerve supply and action is same. Cricopharyngeus originates from lower fibers of inferior constrictor muscles, action sphincter at lower end of pharynx. Stylopharyngeus which comes under internal layer origin, styloid process of temporal bone. Insertion posterior border of thyroid cartilage, nerve supply, it supplies by glossopharyngeal nerve, action elevates larynx during swallowing then salpingopharyngeus its origin is auditory tube insertion blends with platopharyngeus nerve supply by pharyngeal plexus and its action elevates pharynx last platopharyngeus origin palatine aponeurosis insertion posterior border of thyroid cartilage supplies by pharyngeal plexus its action elevates wall of pharynx, pulls platopharyngeal arc medially. So guys, thank you for listening. Ignore my mistakes. Till then, take care. 
and I'm going to upload next video on the topic of different parts of pharynx. So guys, please like and subscribe Body Capsule.